Hello, this is Thogdad here, and today we enter the tempestuous and secretive world of football Twitter, where everyone is right and everyone else is a bloody nonce. And I've asked you for your original thoughts, and we've got some absolute gems today. And the first one is from Niall Moran. Now, Niall, we all know him. He's always good for a laugh. I mean, this is the only guy I know who had his Arsenal shirt hijacked while he was doing an interview outside the ground. Just put, just put it on over you. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Niall, how do you manage this stuff? So what has Niall got to say to us today? The government needs to invest in and support self-driving cars to prevent road accidents. Well, do you know what? It's not what I expected, Niall, but you're absolutely right. No human should be allowed behind the wheel of a car. We take drugs and we drive. We drink and drive. We make human mistakes. And above all, we get involved in road rage accidents. It should be robot, shouldn't it? And in 30 years' time, no human will be allowed behind the wheel of a car. So, Niall, you're spot on. But, mate, go back to doing the stupid stuff. <laughs> the next tweet is from Ark. Celtic would survive in the Prem. Well, I think you're right and you're wrong at the same time. I mean, Celtic have got some wonderful young players, and I'm thinking of the likes of Jeremy Frimpong, Ryan Christie, Callum McGregor, James Forrest, and Odson Edouard. But do you know that the Celtic squad today is worth about 66 million quid, and that's about half the value of Norwich. So if Celtic went into the Premier League next season, you'd almost certainly be relegated. But what Celtic do have is an amazing global fan base of about 9 million fans. And you've got 60,000 fans who'll go to every home game. So give them five to ten years and Celtic would be challenging for the Champions League. Because by then they'd have had a bit of sky money in their back pocket. They'd be a wealthier club and they'd be able to compete. And the next tweet we've got comes from Howard Lee Armstrong. You should be a supporter of a team and not a customer. And I tell you, mate, you're absolutely spot on. Because football should be about this. It should be about heart. I mean, I support Bolton Wanderers for family reasons, and I wouldn't consider supporting another team. And it's nothing to do with money. It's about passion. It's about loyalty. So I say to you young fans out there, find a team early and stick with them and take them to your heart and become an ultra. I don't mean become a hooligan, but I mean go to the games with your scarves, with your banners and with your passion. Be a supporter, not a customer. Now, the next tweet comes from B.A., Automation and machine intelligence will render a large portion of the working class population unemployed in the coming years, especially work involving management, which will soon be replaced with technology. All I can say, mate, is are you Professor Brian Cox in disguise? But you know what? That is a really intelligent tweet. And I think this is both frightening and exciting at the same time. If you're young and growing up and thinking, what will the job market be like in 10, 20 years? All I can say is learn how to handle robots because that's the future and ba we should meet up sometime and have a coke or a beer and talk more about this the next tweet is from ps gaucho plants should be bioengineered to suck up more co2 very very sensible now this video is becoming a bit academic isn't it and we need someone just to take the tone down a little bit Thank you, Ray Vincent. Table three, half chicken medium, spicy rice and corn, and a Coke. Very funny, but I tell you what, no one in my video drinks a Coke, pal. The next tweet comes from Connor. Football was not invented in 1992. Absolutely right, mate. Football didn't start in 1992, and it's not just about the Premier League. So I tell you what, go and speak to your granddad or your grandma or your dad about what football was like in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s. Listen to the stories, because football existed then. And it's not just about Chelsea, Man United, Liverpool. It's about Kidderminster and Newport County and Stockport County and Oldham Athletic. And it's also about football in Iceland and Portugal and Germany. There's so much out there that most of us haven't discovered. Football isn't just about the Premier League. A tweet from Ramiz. Galatasaray are a bigger club than Man City based upon history and fans. And I'm putting a table on the screen right now from Sport Bible that shows that Galatasaray are actually the 17th most successful team of all time. So you're actually right. I mean, of course, Man City are more successful in the Champions League these days. They're a richer, bigger club these days. But you're right, Galatasaray has got a deeper and longer history. 
<laughs> Finley AFC. Katie Hopkins is a twat, question mark. Why do you need the question mark? The trouble is I asked for original thinking and that is not original. I think most people agree with that. Oh, and the next tweet comes from Nathan Revived. Oh, I like Nathan. He's always saying nice things about me. And Nathan says, Thog Dad shags hamsters. All I can say is that hamster, she is a liar. The judge threw that case out straight away and the wheels of justice are working perfectly. Wheels, like hamster's wheel? No, okay, we'll move on to the next tweet. Ooh, Ollie from Newcastle says, Newcastle United should be a top eight club. Well, I'll tell you in football, mate, the word should is a very dangerous word. Now, every year, Deloitte's, the accountants, do this study of the top 20 teams in the world in terms of how rich they are. And there's eight English teams in there. And you know who they are. Liverpool, Everton, Man City, Man United, Chelsea, Arsenal, Tottenham and West Ham. Newcastle are not a top 20 club at the moment. But you wait until the Saudis get here next year. My goodness, it's every Newcastle fan right now is praying for the oil price to go up. And it's going to be fascinating what Newcastle do over the next three to five years if the takeover happens. Oh, a good one here from GE Techers 7. The EFL and FA needs to appreciate and involve the fans more with football because the EFL and FA don't care about the fan. That is so true. And something that I've noticed over the last few years is how expensive football's become and how corporate it's become. I mean, it's all about money. I mean, I went to the Emirates once last year with Theo, and I couldn't believe how upper middle class it was. I'm thinking, look, if I'm just some normal North London Arsenal fan, husband and wife, two kids, you can't afford to go to the games. You can't afford to be a real fan anymore. And that is really sad. And I'd like the EFL and the FA to look at the German model of football, where almost every club is owned by the fans. You've got this fan ownership model and football is fun and exciting and affordable for the average fan. Oh, Milner the Goat says Kevin De Bruyne is a better player than Lampard, Gerrard and Skulls. It hurts to say this as a Liverpool fan. Well, mate, you've just named four absolute legends of the game and the only way to solve this is a poll on football Twitter. And I kept this going for 20 minutes 1,500 people responded and they agree with you. Kevin De Bruyne is the best midfielder, according to Football Twitter, over the last 20 minutes. Oh, a good one here from Robert. Bayern Munich's squad has the brightest future in the world. And I tell you what, watching Bayern Munich in the flesh and on telly recently, I've got to agree with you. I mean, just look at the Bayern Munich squad right now. Alfonso Davis, Joshua Kimmich. Kingsley Coman, and of course, Robert Lewandowski. This is an amazing team, and I'm going to make a prediction right here, right now. In the next three years, Bayern Munich will win at least one Champions League. And also, the great thing about Bayern Munich is it's owned by the fans, so it's sustainable. You don't need some rich shake to pour in billions of oil money. This is a club that'll be big and amazing in 20, 30 and 50 years' time. Ooh, a comment from Alex. United will win a Premier League in the next five years. Well, I've got this sneaky feeling that Man United have turned the corner in the last few months. And I'm actually going to agree with you. But this depends upon the United back office, the bosses doing the right thing. In other words, spending money and spending money correctly and bringing on the right players. And yes, it wouldn't surprise me if Man United won the league before 2026. Ooh, a good one here from RFC John Joe TDL. Now, the TDL, of course, is the Thogdad Defence League, 15,000 strong. And he says, quite simply, fuck the EFL. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? What's the most popular chant at football grounds over the last few years? It's fuck the EFL. And do you know what? That's not because we're all yobbos who want to use the F word. That's because this is increasingly what we think. Bolton fans have seen a historic club nearly go under. What do the EFL do? Yeah, they help us along by docking us 12 points. Bury gets into a difficult situation. One of the most historic clubs in the country. What do the EFL do? They let them go under. Coventry, they've been reduced to virtual gypsies in football, going from one ground to the next. What do the EFL do? Apparently nothing. Now, I think we're in a situation where dozens of EFL clubs are technically bankrupt. 
And the EFL should be getting off its ass and thinking, what is the future of lower league football? And I doubt they're doing that. I doubt they have one original thought between them. And we mentioned the concepts of fan ownership, for example. And we need to think about getting more money down from the Premier League into lower league football. There's so much needs to be done. And increasingly, none of us trust the EFL to do that. Now, is anyone from the EFL watching this little video? Probably not. They probably don't know what football Twitter is. I mean, it's the grassroots of football, so most probably they're not watching. So, fuck the EFL. A lot of people saying that, and the EFL should start to listen to that chant. <laughs> now, Forever Jers, now I'm assuming he's a Rangers fan. Glasgow Rangers is the most successful team in football. Well, I'm putting something on the screen now that shows that you are the second most successful team in football when judged by number of trophies. The number one is Al Ali of Egypt. Now, every Rangers fan will tell you Rangers have won the league 54 times. They're very keen to make it 55. So a huge club with a huge history, but not quite number one. That goes to Egypt. Oh, a good one from Breezy. If Jadon Sancho signs for Manchester United, he can be their next Ronaldo. Well, I've been lucky enough to see Jadon Sancho in the flesh in Dortmund, and this kid is something special. Yes, he could be the next Ronaldo, but all I'd say to fans out there is give the lad some time and space. And the next tweet comes from Brandon Brackets on loan at Union Berlin. Union Berlin, great club. And all he says is, Adam Johnson isn't a nonce. Well, this is a legal question. So I've asked my lawyer, Dan Perry, to call me up. Oh, and, and, and that appears to be the phone ringing. Uh, hello? Oh, it, it's Dan Perry, my lawyer. Oh, yeah, Dan. So Adam Johnson isn't a nonce, according to one of the people on football Twitter. Can you just look through your law books? Okay, so that's chapter eight. Section 15, and what did the appeal say? And, and, and the, okay, and the second appeal, okay, th thanks, Dan Perry, I appreciate that. Send me the bill. I'm afraid we can't agree with you, mate. And the next tweet comes from Cavin. The Irish guy is the goat, and you should collab with him. Correct on both counts. The Irish guy is brilliant, and yes, I should collab with him. And you know what, I think I might invite Theo along so the three of us can do a little video at some point. A tweet from Oliver King, Leeds United are the biggest sleeping giant English football has ever witnessed. Well, you make a good point. Other sleeping giants out there, I would include definitely Newcastle, I would include Aston Villa, West Ham, you could talk about Derby, Notts Forest, West Brom. There's a lot of sleeping giants. Leeds are definitely in the top 10. If you get it together off the pitch and on the pitch, Leeds could be a very big club over the next 10 years. <laughs> and the next one is a picture of Chestnut. And I'm told that this looks like me. It looks nothing like me. A tweet here from Sean. The Europa League may well be the most underrated competition. Well, I agree with you, mate. I absolutely love the Europa League. And anyone who's been to Ibrox or Celtic Park on a Thursday when it's European night will agree that the passion, the excitement is there. This is not a Mickey Mouse trophy. And it's a brilliant excuse for YouTubers like me and Theo to go all over the Europe and see some really exciting, fun football. I love the Europa League. So I want to say a massive thank you to the brilliant world of football Twitter for sending in these comments. And if you like this video, let's do another one. This is Thogdad saying, see ya.